Okay, we're going to start now. So thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, my name is Ezra Lipton, and I'm a program specialist with Smart Commute Toronto. And uh, my name is Jen Robertson, and I'm also coming to you as a program specialist from Smart Commute Toronto. And uh, we'll be presenting today our bike parking, best practices for every employer. Um, and this is a presentation that we've prepared with uh, some members of the uh, City of Toronto's cycling team, um, as well just from our own research. And so we're really excited to uh, present these uh, tips and best practices for you today. And also, if you have any questions, um, feel free to just write them in the text box, um, in the chat box. And uh, we have another member of our team here who will uh, find a good time to read them out and we'll respond to them as best we can. Um, and if not, we'll t definitely be taking questions or comments at the end. Um, but yeah, if you have them on the spur of your head, just feel free to write them in the chat box. So let's begin. So we're going to start off with just a question of why bike parking? Um, so the provision of bike parking is integral for the continued growth of cycling in the city. Um, and the following slides are going to focus on both the identified benefits of cycling and bike parking. So an important thing to consider when you're thinking about bike parking is that it enables cycling. Consider this, if there wasn't any place to park your car, would you still drive it to wherever you were going? Probably not. And so you have to think about that same mentality if, um, for a cyclist. They're not going to want to ride their bike if there's not a secure, um, predictable, reliable place for them to park their car. Um, and this is being found in research as well. Um, they've, researchers have found that uh, workplace cycling facilities increase the odds of cycling, um, and so those include secure bike parking, showers, lockers, um, and other kind of um, amenities for cyclists. And why do we want to enable cycling? Why do we want to benefit cycling or encourage cycling? Um, there's many benefits of cycling. Um, a study this year uh, from Montreal found that cyclists are the most punctual employees and are uh, also the most energized after their commute. Um, cyclists have less employee ab uh, absence um, as well. There's the environmental benefits, reducing uh, air pollution, carbon emissions, congestion, and noise in the city um, compared to driving or taking public transit, and also the uh, personal health benefits, uh, reducing uh, risk of some diseases. And so in Smart Commute, um, we've done many surveys, of course. Um, and so this is just an example from one of our surveys, um, looking at comparing um, what would encourage people to cycle at workplaces. And we found that overwhelmingly, secure bike parking and shower and locker facilities are much more likely to encourage people to cycle compared to other, um, other potential uh, incentives. Uh, for example, here we have flexible work hours. Sounds pretty good to me, um, but, you know, like a, a thing that I would enjoy having. But again, at the end of the day, secured bike parking and shower and locker facilities are what is going to encourage people to actually uh, make that uh, switch to cycling. Um, and also, it's when it comes down to the bottom line, um, it's important to remember that um, bicycles have, are more efficient um, and have a lower cost associated with them when it comes to parking. And so you can fit 10 bicycles comfortably into one car parking space. Um, and there's a car parking space isn't cheap to maintain. Um, I've found research that points to $500 to $900 per year. Um, and also it costs twenty dollars to $30,000 to build one space in a parking garage. Um, and so for everybody, who, each person that's cycling, that's potentially one car. And so that's huge savings to the bottom line. Um, you're using less space. And um, that's saving the company money. So why is cycling important to promote in Toronto? Um, transportation represents 41% of greenhouse gas emissions in our city. And the number of people cycling to work increased from 69% to, from 2001 to 2011. And that's from the StatsCan data. And 88% of cyclists and 80% of non-cyclists agree that there is a shortage of secure bike parking in the city. 59% say that the lack of secure bike parking at their destination is the primary factor preventing them from riding. So that's pretty um, overwhelming statistics there showing the need for and importance of uh, bike parking. So now we're going to get into what is bike parking specifically. 
So bike parking can be long-term bike parking, which is meant to, for use for more than four hours of parking. Uh, this would include employees commuting to work. Uh, this type of parking includes bike racks in an enclosed secured area of controlled access. Here we have a photo of an outdoor cage, which has a nice covering to it, and you'd likely need a fob or a key in order to access this. Uh, there's also the City of Toronto's bike lockers, which provide a secure, long-term parking for uh, bicycles as well. We'll also be speaking to short-term bike parking examples. So this is meant for uh, just a few hours, so uh, under four hours of uh, parking. Uh, think of this as maybe bicycle visitor parking, for example. This includes bike racks and an easily accessible location like the city's ring and posts. Uh, and generally speaking, short-term parking is available for public use. So anyone visiting your workplace. Short-term bike parking can also be sheltered, um, which promotes a better user experience by providing weather protection. No one wants to hop on their bike after a rainstorm and have their seat be wet, for example. Uh, if you don't want to invest in a uh, in longer, kind of more expensive covering, uh, a good example of how you can use the space you already have around your workplace would be to put the bike racks underneath an existing awning if you have something like that at your building or at your workplace. So to kind of get into the nuts and bolts of it all, uh, short-term versus long-term bike parking. Short-term, generally speaking, doesn't protect bicycles from vandalism or theft attempts. Generally speaking, it doesn't have a security guard monitor monitoring it at all times. Long-term, keeps bicycles safe from vandalism or theft more so. Uh, generally speaking, there's a security desk or some sort of a camera system that really can help uh, bicycles from getting stolen. Uh, on the other hand, short-term bike parking is less expensive to install. Uh, relative to long-term parking, generally speaking, there is a higher capital cost. Uh, for a short term, we're looking at uh, kind of visitor parking, so someone parking their bike for a couple hours tops, versus long term, which is uh, for someone parking their bike perhaps overnight or while they're at work for the day. This is ideal for employees or residents of buildings. Short term parking is insufficient for all day parking for employees, but then again, long term parking may not always be accessible to the public who may be visiting your workplace or building. So having a mix of both is very important. So I'm going to get into how do you install bike parking? with some thoughts on the design of uh, bike parking. So short-term parking, once again, this is provided uh, usually using bike racks outside. Um, these, this is the most common form that we have. Uh, and some considerations that you should bear in mind when you're installing short-term bike parking are the location of the, the racks or other short-term accommodations, the visibility of them, the space required, as well as security. So here are some examples uh, from bike parking around Toronto and uh, later on from around the world. So here we have an example of a, of a poor location of a bike rack. So as you can see, if the arrow on the right there, the front entrance of this building is quite far away compared to where the bike rack is located. Generally speaking, if someone would have to walk that far in order to lock their bike, they're much more likely to lock their bike to maybe a, a post or a bench or some other non-bike parking specific infrastructure in order to avoid that long walk. So that's not ideal. Uh, another uh, kind of issue with this, uh, this bike parking is, although the design is pretty creative and, and kind of fun, uh, it's not really explicitly labeled as bike parking. There's, there's no sign here saying it's for bikes. Uh, it doesn't look like a conventional bike rack. Um, as you can see, if this bicycle didn't have a kickstand, it would likely topple over. Um, so definitely bearing in mind the user experience of making sure the bike rack is well labeled and easy to park to, uh, will we'll keep the bike upright is very important. Uh, next, we have visibility. So bike parking should be easy to spot from the road. Uh, cyclists will avoid parking in isolated areas, uh, so choose some more visible, high traffic for security reasons, uh, as, as well as uh, something that just generally feels safe to, to access. So this photo is another bad example. Here we have what looks like a back alleyway where we have uh, some, some bikes locked here. And once again, just based on the, uh, the rack choice, um, it's quite difficult to lock the bicycle to the rack. The rack is a bit too close to the wall. Uh, once again, kind of a, a back alleyway that might necess not necessarily feel very user friendly. And people have gotten quite creative in how they've uh, kind of managed to, to use this, uh, this bike rack here. Uh, so next we're gonna talk a bit about space. Um, so make sure you leave enough room to lock up bicycles next to each other when you're installing multiple racks. Um, you have to bear in mind that a lot of bikes will have kind of wider handlebars or accessories like panniers on them. So give some people some room to get in and out of the bike rack area. Uh, generally speaking, if you're dealing directly with a manufacturer of bicycle racks, they tend to overstate the number of bikes that can be uh, parked in a given space, generally speaking. 
Uh, so plan for each bicycle to use up to half a meter uh, to about one and a half meters of space, um, or two by six in, in feet, and allow for at least half a meter or two foot clearance between racks uh, next to each other, as well as uh, walls, poles, street furniture, and, uh, and pedestrians that may be accessing the, the space in and around your bike rack. And just as a notebook, this presentation is being recorded, and you'll have access to these slides later on. So don't feel pressured to kind of jot down these numbers really fast. This will be available to you later. Uh, another thing to bear in mind is security. So uh, choose bike racks made of galvanized steel and industrial grade materials. So you should definitely be avoiding any bike racks made out of wood, soft metals, untreated metals that will rust like in this photo here, uh, cast composites that are brittle and may crack under impact. Um, definitely try to have a rack design that can be welded to the ground. Here we have a bike rack that can be slid around, which isn't necessarily ideal either. Um, and basically um, having these well-made racks with uh, nice finishing, no, uh, no rust, uh, keeps the bike safe. So a rusty rack is much more likely to get broken into you and, uh, and destroyed by a bike thief uh, than a kind of more secure option. Uh, another thing to bear in mind is uh, convenience and, uh, and access to, to short-term bike parking. Here we have someone uh, looking a bit distraught, wondering where she's going to lock her bike up. Uh, it's great that as cycling becomes more and more popular, we uh, definitely have more higher demand for bike parking. But when you're installing your short-term racks, uh, keep in mind they might need to add more later. And we'll get more into what monitor monitoring that will look like. So some thoughts on, uh, on long-term bike parking. So this can be offered indoors or outdoors, depending on available space. Uh, indoors is usually um, the preferred if you, if you do have the ability to do so. Um, it's preferred for security and comfort. Uh, this can be anything from a bike room inside of your building to even just adding some racks into your front lobby. So it can be something very simple uh, as well as uh, a more intensive uh, retrofit of, uh, of an existing room. Sometimes outdoor bike parking is your only option, and that's all right. Here is an example of a bike cage with a special fob uh, access or a special key that can only be accessed by employees. And here we can also see that the uh, bike racks are installed underneath an awning, once again maintaining that weather protection, which we are very excited to see. And once again, just to highlight, the City of Toronto does have bike lockers for long-term parking. So some long-term considerations. Uh, bear in mind uh, the convenience, weather protection, security, and availability of your long-term bike parking. Here are some examples. So this is a fantastic example from Union Station. We have a, a bicycle station now installed there. We're really excited. Uh, this is a definitely great, uh, very convenient location to access. It's right by a major transit hub. Uh, it also, just to access, has a, a fairly adequate signage. There's no stairs to get into it or any other obstructions. You can't see too, uh, this, that well in this photo, unfortunately, but on the left-hand side, there is a button for accessibility. So you could walk up and push on this button and the door would open for you. So you won't be fumbling around with your bike and all your all your gear trying to open up this, this door. Once you enter this facility, there is a security uh, person just at, at your left, uh, left hand side and they also are very welcoming and can answer any questions. So definitely very convenient and easy to use. Uh, here's another uh, convenience added into uh, RBC Center, which is uh, located in downtown Toronto. So they actually have a uh, ramp. So you can see here there's uh, bullards separating the car ramp from the bike ramp. Uh, you kind of enter in from the outside and go down this, um, this access way. There's enough room even for two bikes to be riding side by side. Um, it's definitely a great example. And also just in terms of weather protection, our, our next consideration, uh, this ramp won't get icy or, or wet. It's inside, which is great. And there's a security person nearby as well. Uh, so definitely this is a great example here. And just a note on weather protection and uh, on security as well. Here, this is also the, the room inside of RBC Center. So once you get on the ramp, you, you enter this room here. And uh, you can see that people actually feel safe enough using this facility that they actually leave their helmets uh, beside their bikes. They're leaving their clothing and their other belongings. So definitely, this is a good example of peace of mind for people really feeling like they can uh, leave their, their belongings down here and speaks to convenience as well, of just having access to the shower and the, and the space here. As you can see, there's towels in the background there. Uh, and finally, uh, on availability, so cyclists need a consistent place to, lo to lock up, especially when you're talking long-term bike parking at your, your workplace. So plan for enough parking for the busiest days and be prepared to add more parking as more people choose to cycle. Uh, Smart Commute Premium clients can ask the coordinator for help estimating the capacity of long-term bike parking. We do offer that for you. So please be in touch if this, this is something that you uh, have in mind for your workplace. 
And uh, in this photo, we see the bicycle station at Union Station once again. And just uh, to plug for the bicycle station, there are 84 bike spots here for, for long-term bike parking. This facility can uh, accommodate 160 users a day over a 24-hour period. So definitely, uh, in terms of availability, uh, this is a great example. Some more examples of long-term parking from around Toronto. Here we have the bike room at 25 York Street. Um, another another great example here, as well as on the right, we have bike parking at 92 Carlton Avenue, a residential building. So as you can see, there's definitely many people around Toronto uh, implementing more and more bike parking. An example from around the world, it's not just Toronto that's uh, excited about this. Here on the left-hand side, we have the Midtown Cycle Vault in London, England. And on the right, we have the bicycle station in Washington, D.C. So cities and companies around the world are building amenity-filled, architecturally appealing, secured bike parking, demonstrating their commitment to cycling. Uh, so definitely this is very much something that we're very excited to, to see. Thank you, Jen. Uh, so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about the next steps for building bike parking at your workplace, uh, kind of as a guide for the steps to follow when you're thinking about building bike parking. Yeah. So a good place to start is taking an inventory. Um, here on the screen, we have um, all the different bike parking that's around Metro Hall, our uh, workplace for the city of Toronto. So we looked at where the ring and posts are, um, bike share stations, uh, secure bike parking in the underground garage, bicycle lockers, um, and we, we've inventoried all that. We've seen how many spots there are and recorded that, um, also shower facilities and lockers. Um, so it's good to think about at your building, what are all the potential spaces um, and create an inventory of that. A next step is to observe and survey. So um, it's as uh, the users, the people who use the, the space, um, the cyclists, they probably have a good idea of, um, you know, they might have some insights or uh, to be able to identify issues or um, opportunities for improvement in your current bike parking as everyday users. Um, so it's great to be able to uh, survey them and ask them how they're using the space, but also, you know, passively observing, seeing how many spots are being used, how people are using the space. Um, once you've decided that you're going to be building new bike parking, locating that bike parking is an important step. Um, looking, thinking back to uh, lots of the best practices that Jen spoke about, um, you know, not locating it in a back alley or um, accessing it through a back alley that might be uh, intimidating, especially as the weather gets uh, darker early, earlier in the evening. Um, you want people to feel secure. And so thinking of a good location that's accessible, um, welcoming, and uh, feel secure for people is important. Once you've found the space, uh, designing um, that space is important. So thinking again about accessibility, uh, the example from the bike station of having an, uh, a button to open the door for cyclists is really helpful as well as um, the design of racks. So getting a racks that are appropriate for the space. In the photo here, we have um, bikes that are hung vertically. And while the, people do like this because it is a little bit more efficient use of space, um, it can present itself a bit sometimes as um, a challenge to people as um, people with really heavy commuter bikes might not be able to lift their bike vertically. Um, so it's good to have a mix of racks so that people are able to all people are able to access the space and um, main interest that cycling uh, is more inclusive. Um, as well, uh, make sure the capacity um, is good for your target of your workplace. Um, as well, think about the security. So again, security on the door, um, any security cameras or, or, or access to the space, um, and any other facilities you want to include, like lockers or showers, and you're ready to build. And once you've built a space, you're not quite done. Um, it's really important to go back and observe and modify as needed. Um, so document and record how the, the new facilities are being used and get feedback from those users on what they think about the space. Um, I really like the photo here. It just shows that um, in the space they put a bench in because they saw that they had this little awkward space to the side um, and they found a little bench that they put in there. Um, and that's, a, you know, provides a really nice amenity for um, cyclists when they arrive in the morning or leaving at night to uh, gather their belongings, kind of organize their, their bags or and put on their clothes or anything. Um, and that's just, again, you know, modifying the space and en enhancing it um, in an ongoing process. And so, you know, once, you're, once you've done this, you're not quite done yet. Um, 
as I mentioned, cycling is growing very quickly in Toronto, 69% from 2001 to, it increased 69% from 2001 to 2011, um, and we expect that it'll keep growing. So we're excited to see what the uh, census results show later this year on uh, commuting mode shared by cycling. Um, so it's important to regularly keep record and report on these new facilities um, so you know if you're almost at capacity, um, when to start thinking about building new, new facilities. Check in with the users, get feedback from them, and also make sure your tenants know um, or your employees know about the facility. A lot of times um, people don't actually know that a uh, secure bike parking might exist in their building or how to get access to that space. So um, having a sheet that outlines um, or including it in new employee presentations um, is really important outlining how they can get security access to that uh, bike parking as well as where it is located um, and, and uh, how to access it. And repeat as necessary. So that's all for us for now. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, if we have any questions, we'll be happy to uh, respond to them. Um, and yeah, thanks again. Thanks, everyone. And uh, to, in order to ask us questions, we do have a little chat box here. So uh, feel free to uh, enter your question in the in the chat box. Uh, so our first question is uh, whether or not we have recommendations for uh, manufacturers. Um, so definitely, I, one of the examples actually from, from the previous slide here, I don't know if you can go back to it, actually is from a manufacturer. So in terms of uh, the amount of space that is allocated to bike parking on this slide here, this is from a manufacturer. Uh, so definitely, I mean, folks doing doing work in the in this field have a fair amount of knowledge. Uh, there are some bike parking styles that I don't really see um, the kind of um, benefit of, notably um, the example I gave here. Uh, I think that it's great that we're doing creative uh, bike parking, that we're really trying to um, to get stuff that looks interesting and different. I know around Toronto we do have fairly artistic short-term bike parking racks that I think are kind of neat, um, but definitely bearing in mind the user experience is very important, and I hope that we continue to do that. And I'll just add, um, my name's Jennifer as well, I, I work with Smart Commute. Um, at this moment, we don't have a list of vendors that we recommend or actual manufacturers, but it might be something that we'll be able to work on in the future, but at the moment, we can't specifically recommend anyone. Um, but we could link you with other uh, buildings that have purchased equipment, and you could chat with them to see who they've used as well. Um, but there's definitely a, a, a lot of manufacturers out there that are entering this space because it has become a growing area, so it's something that's always changing as well. Um, so one other thing I wanted to add, this is uh, Jennifer McGowan again. Um, there are lots of other fun things you can add to bike parking to make it even better. Um, so Ezra was mentioning some accessories like benches, um, but you can also think I've seen some employers add uh, tool stands so you could actually repair your bike while you're in that space. So they add a pump, it could be as simple as just buying a pump. You can also buy some tools, you can buy the ones that are uh, more stationary so they're actually attached to the wall, uh, but you can also just you know, for a lower cost, um, just add some tools to the space that people share and they'll be able to fix their bikes up. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, thinking about your management system. So some companies and, and buildings have come through and actually uh, had employees register to be part of the, the bike, secure bike parking, and then they put a little sticker on their bike to say that they're part of it so security can monitor who's using it and, and communicate with those people as well in case there's changes or additions that need to happen. So, you know, you can think through those systems um, once you get to that point. And again, we can help you do that here at Smart Commute if you are building new bike parking.
Okay, so we have another question here. Do you have a good example of the vertical hanging bike rack? We have wall space that could use it. Uh, so definitely, um, I mean, the the only issue with the vertical bike rack is definitely, as Ezra mentioned, just getting the bikes uh, on and off of them. Um, but definitely, that being said, uh, I guess any bike parking is better is better than no no bike parking or uh, any adding of bike parking. We're definitely advocating for today. Um, so if you if you would be able to kind of give us uh, even to take a photo and, and be in touch with us uh, through Smart Commute through your coordinator, that's definitely a good next step, and we'll we'll work with you on that uh, depending on what the space looks like. Thank you. Okay, so next question. Um, how is the best way to determine how many bikes would fit in a secure bike space? Would the vendors recommend options and capacity for the space available? So we touched on this a little bit, so maybe you can expand further. Right, so um, when determining how many bikes to put in a space, again, just thinking about um, accessibility of the space, you want, um, going back to the slide, um, I mean, obviously, this isn't a dedicated bike room. This is an example from um, out on a street. Um, but thinking about maintaining a walkway so that people can uh, walk past each other, you generally want about a meter, meter and a half of space for one person to be walking, especially with their bike at their side. Um, you know, especially if two people are trying to pass each other, that's that one and a half meter gets, you know, is about the limit maximum space that you can have people passing each other on. Um, and then, as Jennifer mentioned, as Jen mentioned, um, having space between the racks for um, lots of accessories, panniers as well, so it's not a big struggle to actually get in and access the bike to pull it out. Um, so you do want a bit of that space, um, and that kind of forms the uh, capacity of a space. I can't, you know, say off the top of my head if you had a, a space with a certain dimensions what the um, capacity of that space would necessarily be. Um, again, we showed some examples in our presentation of stacked bike racks as well. Um, so those are kind of, are a little more costly. Um, but they, um, like here at the bike station, they're a little more costly, but they of course double um, the uh, capacity of the space. You need to have a certain ceiling height. Um, and um, yeah, so those could be a great option. Again, it's a little more expensive. So it's it's really thinking, you know, it's a full process of thinking about the style or type of bike rack you're going to be using and then also finding the right space and the cost, all those kind of things come together to decide and also your capacity. I definitely just add on that and say, yeah, I mean, bike parking can be anything from a, from a rack and uh, outside to to a more extensive retrofit of a room. So if you do, if anyone does have a very specific location in mind or really just wants to explore what that would look like for their workplace, definitely be in contact with your smart commute coordinator. Um, I mean, bike parking can be anything from a, an $80 rack to a, to a much more uh, intensive and, uh, and much more longer term uh, indoor bike parking. So definitely we're willing to work with you on that. Okay, um, and just to add on a little bit more to the ask, they were asking about vendors. So vendors will have recommendations as to spacing, but as was mentioned before, they might, you know, overestimate the capacity just because they're trying to, you know, sell you on the product. So we, it's a good combination to work with the vendor and work with us or work with others that have built this before. And I would say err on the side of leaving a bit more space if you're unsure um, and ask users. So uh, those that are using the space, um, what they're looking for as well. Um, there's another question here about air pumps. So we have air pumps already, but would like a tool stand. Do you have a building contact that has a tool stand they'd recommend? Uh, so I know that one of the, the major manufacturers of, uh, of tool stands is called Fix-It. Uh, I definitely am not saying I'm advocating for them over, over any other um, provider, but they're just a provider that I know other organizations have used. Um, there is also a local company that's piloting, uh, creating stands, uh, Fix-It stands um, right now. So definitely if you do want to be in touch, we can provide you with uh, some recommendations or a, a list of vendors, um, but uh, we can't really advocate for one over the other without going through a, a process ourselves but um, definitely uh, be in touch and we will try to connect you. This 
so we have another question. Do you know the size of the bike lockers? Can they fit all bikes, those with baskets, for example? How much space is required to be able to install them? Um, so um, bike lockers normally can uh, fit about the size of, uh, of a bike with fairly wide handlebars and, and a basket. I mean, if you have accessories on your bike, uh, often they won't go beyond the span of the handlebars. Um, so as long as that fits in, you should be good to go. Uh, in terms of, uh, of space and install, it, it, it kind of depends on uh, how much space you need between them, how many you're looking at. Uh, I, do, I do know that they cost between, um, I believe, uh, one fifteen hundred to two thousand um, dollars, but that doesn't actually include shipping nor the the cost of uh, of putting it together because it does come shipped uh, kind of in a box and you have to get someone to to put it together for you. But um, definitely. I mean, not to be a broken record, but please send us photos and please uh, let us know exactly what you have in mind and we'll try working with you to get something that works specifically for your workplace and your context. All right, uh, last call for questions. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us again today. Um, it's really great to hear some of your questions and, and share uh, what Jen and I have learned um, about bike parking and um, hopefully inspire you on uh, upgrading some of the bike parking at your workplaces. Um, again, as we've said many times, if you have any further questions about your specific space, um, or you want something to be assessed or anything like that, don't hesitate to call your Smart Commute co Coordinator and uh, they'll be happy to come and uh, look at the space and work further with you on um, how to upgrade bike parking at your workplace. So thanks again for joining and I uh, hope you have a great day. Bye.